Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the minimum that is the least variance that is the risk portfolio. So that portfolio in which the risk of the portfolio is minimum. Now in our earlier video we discussed about this efficient frontier. What was that efficient frontier? It tells about that how diversification works that we already see you have seen and that video of that efficient frontier. Now what is that portfolio at which the risk is minimum? It is at somewhere at this point that is where inefficient portfolio ends and the efficient portfolio starts. Here you can see that the return, the return is this and the risk is the minimum one. So how to calculate the weight to achieve this point, to achieve this portfolio. So for example, in we, I have a portfolio of stock A and stock B. There are two stocks and what will be the expected return that will be the weighted average ER of stock A that will be the weighted average of its return and stock B the weighted average of its return. That is the easiest thing to calculate in this minimum variance portfolio. Now we know how to calculate the risk of the portfolio that is the under root of weight square of stock A multiplied by standard deviation of standard deviation square of stock A plus same for stock B plus 2 into weight of stock A multiplied by stock B multiplied by covariance between these stocks and whole under root. That is how we used to calculate this risk of the portfolio. But when I talk about this weight, what should be the proportion of this weight? Whether the stock A should comprise of 1% and B 99% or vice versa or it may be 50-50% or 60-40 or 40-60 or 30-70. So there can be infinite combination of these two stocks. But what is that combination? What is that weight at which the risk of that portfolio will be the minimum that is the minimum variance portfolio so how to calculate that weight so the formula for calculating that weight is is also very simple you just need to remember this the variance or the standard deviation square of the other stock that is y minus covariance of both these stocks divided by variance of x plus variance of y minus 2 into covariance of x and y. So let's see how this formula actually works with the help of an example. Now these are the returns of the stock and to calculate the expected return what was the formula to calculate the weighted average. Weighted average that is 60 divided by 5 in case of stock X and 80 divided by 5 in case of stock Y that is 16% of stock Y and 12% of stock X. That was the simplest calculation. Now we need to calculate the standard deviation. So I, if, I request you to please see that video also how we used to calculate the standard deviation or the variance. It is the four step process. First calculate the return that is the average and then calculate the deviation from that average of this return. So for example in the first one I am taking that is the x minus 12. So what is the deviation from this return? It is minus 7. Same for y minus y bar also and then the step first to square because there sum will be 0 and it is of nowhere that will we can use this. So we used to calculate this square that is x minus x bar whole square. So minus 7 whole square that is 49, 6 whole square that is 36. And the last step to calculate the covariance, what was the covariance? That is the joint deviation of x around x bar and y around y bar. That is joint deviation that is minus 7 multiplied by minus 6. So joint deviation. 
that is minus 7 multiplied by minus 6 is equals to plus 42 minus 2 into plus 4 that is minus 8 so now we need to calculate the variance of stop y what is the formula that is summation of y minus y bar whole square divided by n minus 1 so y minus y bar whole square that is the deviation but why we are doing this n minus 1 that is a reason the reason that i told you in earlier videos also that we are not taking all the returns of that stop we are taking a sample and when we are taking a sample to give an unbiased estimator to give a return or the answer far from this you can say the average we are dividing it by n minus 1 so for stock 5 it will be 70 divided by 4 that is 17.5 percentile so it will be 17.5 percent now variance of stock x the formula is same that will be 130 divided by n minus 1 that is 4 that is 32.5 percent now we know the experience of a square that is 17.5 we already calculated now the next thing is covariance of x and y that is the joint deviation joint deviation of x around x bar and y around y bar so what will be the formula for calculating this that is 65 divided by 4 that is 16.25 percent so now we know all these values in this formula the formula was i know you remember that is the variance of y minus covariance of both these stocks divided by variance of both stocks minus 2 into covariance so we get the weight weight of x that is 0 0.07 now weight of x is 0 0.07 the other is weight of stock y and the weight sum is 1 so 1 minus 0 0.07 gives us 0 0.93 so at this weight when i have a stock x in this proportion and a stock y in this proportion the risk that is the standard deviation of the portfolio the root one formula the risk of that portfolio will be the minimum and when you will calculate using these weights the risk will come somewhere around between 4.1726 percentile that is the least risk in that portfolio when you will change these weights the risk may be higher so that is all about minimum variance portfolio thanks